It's your boy Ken with Anchorage. As you can see again, it's still raining, doing its own thing. So, of course, we still set back just a little bit, but we still getting a lot of other things done. Got the tank uh, covered with its protective coat. Uh, actually, gonna take you inside and show you something else, though. You got to bear with me on this camera equipment, but see that little bit of hair algae back there on that GSP? Yes, I know the glass is dirty again. It's supposed to be our last clean, but it wasn't. And I got a little bit more down here on this colony of Zoas. I'm going to show you my hydrogen peroxide dip. And uh, show you how we remove that. Some people do it with crabs or other types of herbivores. But Zeus obviously don't like hair algae at all. And that seems to be the only spot where it's growing. Of course, the lowest flow is right there. So... In turn, I think that's why it only produced that. It's only a little bit. It's not a problem to me, but I am going to remove it before moving that coral into the new home where it's all going to go down. We're going to end up using four cups of old tank water, and I'm going to use two tablespoons of peroxide in this container, and then just four uh, cups of tank water in this back container here for the just to rinse it. We've got some regular 3% hydrogen peroxide. Get it at your local Walmart, HEB, CVS, pretty much wherever. And uh, you can do this dip with fresh water, but it is very stressful on a coral. Anytime you put a coral in fresh water, it's stressful. So on something like that, it has to be a real, real bad algae issue. Or a situation where the coral has started to deteriorate and may have a pest on it. Um, I'm using it in tank water this time because, of course, I want to keep it as less stressful as possible. I just want to remove the algae before transferring these corals over here, hopefully within this next week. The main lights have gone out. And uh, I'm sorry for those who don't know what a GSP is. That's the green star pilot back there in the back by Zeus. But uh, I'm finna pull both of those out and we're gonna get them into this dip. And I'm gonna show you how it works. We have the corals out of the water. But as you can see right here, all that green hair algae, we about to get that off of there. We're gonna remove all that off both of these. Here in just a second. Time is set, five minutes. Uh, few little starfish probably not gonna make it through this trip they are real sensitive to this peroxide dip the coral's in the dip go ahead and get our timer started and as always you always want to check for snails and uh, hermit crabs and stuff like that that may have gotten off into the little cracks and crevices that's why I pulled it out in some uh, tank water and then of course we got our trusty syringe but what I normally look for, and why I say we're going to start off for five minutes, is here in a second, you'll see the algae start to bubble up. That's when you know that the peroxide has taken effect. Like right there, and it's starting to pull away the algae from the coral. That's what you want to see. You want to start seeing that. If the coral starts retracting way too much, get it out of the peroxide solution but you want to start to see it fizzle of course you see the starfish down there running and I'm sorry I hate to see a life go if they always get caught up I have so many of these suckers in my tank but they don't cause any harm they keep everything nice and clean and do what they do I normally like to start letting it set up a nice little bit, get a whole bunch of bubbles on it before I start blowing and irritating it. Letting the peroxide work wherever it's going to work. But as you see, it's doing its thing. The coral will be fine, especially on these. These are two of supposed to be the hardiest but here like I say you want to start to see it start to see it bubble just like an infection or 
a cut wood, she poured peroxide on it. And if you notice, it's down at the base of where the algae is actually connected to the rock. And that's where you want it to separate anyway. And believe it or not, it's not all just going to fall off per se, but you will see it deteriorate. And within the next 24 hours, it will be gone. But we're going to watch it for these next few minutes. See how it do. Maybe we'll leave it a little bit longer since it is in regular tank water and not in RO water. Right there, you can see it bubbling up. See the polo starfish is running. And I'm sorry for him. But you can also see some of that algae right there. Just really, it's almost like it's melting it. Well, we're coming up on the last, I guess. 15, 10, 15 seconds, maybe less than that. I might leave them in here for another five minutes. Or just watch them really, really closely during this here five minutes. But we are going to leave them a little bit longer. Just because they're not quite ready yet. Spray it off a little bit and see what comes off of there. But as you see, you know, everybody's got their own methods of doing things. When dealing with hydrogen peroxide, always do your own research. If you've never experimented with it, start off slow. It is the next day. As you can see, the zoas is all opening up, doing just fine. But as you see, we don't have no more hair algae. Just a little bit, but like I say, they all kind of die off. And uh, that GSP I actually left over here since we're getting ready to put everything in a new tank. But as you can see, it's opening to just adjusting to being in a new spot, used to having a little bit more light, a little bit more flow. So it's kind of a change all around. But as you see, you can use hydrogen peroxide to move algae off the corals. Be careful at what you're doing at all times. 48 hours after the hydrogen peroxide dip, as you can see the colony of Zoas doing just fine. Everybody's open. Just a few strands of that hair out, just still kind of doing in the way. Here's our green star pilot doing just fine. Like I said, it's just readjusting. Had to get used to a different type of flow. All that type of good stuff. But, as you see, hydrogen peroxide does work when you're trying to remove hair algae. And, as of course, everybody's getting ready to go into the new home of the reef. I'm only doing this here just to uh, help inspire you, help keep you in the hobby help pass on knowledge. Something like I say, some I wish somebody would have told me. Help keep me going, help keep me strong. But uh I learned it on my own. Uh spent quite a bit of money in this hobby. As well as also have uh learned things that I never thought I would have learned simply by research. So I always do your own research. I always look into it. Uh I'm not telling you anything that I don't try myself. Like these are all things that I do myself, help save a little bit of money, help uh, keep my colonies happy, healthy. Um, same thing with the fish. I mean, there's so much that we, we're about to get into. Like I say, I'm almost done with this tank here. Uh, once we get that set up, then, you know, I can get focused on what's going on here, you know, with the weather issues and everything else going on. I'm just trying to uh, make sure we can stay connected and uh, let you know that I haven't forgotten about my little, my little audience out there. So uh, appreciate all the support. If you like what's going on here, definitely hit that subscribe button. If you like what's, what you see here, hit the like button. But uh, 
definitely uh, stay connected. You know, uh, enjoy reefing, man. It's 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 too beautiful of a hobby not to stay connected.